Welcome to the fourth chapter of our Contemporary Architecture course. In this chapter, we will talk about surface, materiality and ornament. These are very important topics for architecture. Any architect has to deal with them because architecture by itself, in its nature, it's about the materials, it's about how things are built and it's about the perception that we have of these buildings. The architects that we are going to discuss today are first Sana, Katsuyo Sejima and Rue Nishisawa with their uh, new museum here for contemporary art here in Manhattan. Then we'll see the work of Jean Novel, a comparison between the tower, the residential building that we see right behind me and also the Akbar Tower in Barcelona. Afterwards, we'll see the work of uh, Herzog and de Muron, two Swiss architects based in Basel, who have immensely contributed uh, to uh, the field of architecture. The three architects are completely different in the way they approach uh, a building and a design. The work of uh, Sana is immaterial. They work with transparency, they work with glass, with reflections, their buildings almost vanish in the city and when we are inside we are in this immaterial light space. The architecture of Jean Nouvel has a lot to do with the image, has a lot to do with the color and with the effect that it has in the city through these uh, unique features of uh, architecture. The work of Herzog and de Muron goes back to the basics of what the material is, what for example, a brick is, what a structure is, and they uh, work a lot with the membrane of the building. There are architects who are much more interested in, in the space as a basic element and, and feature of architecture, and their recent architecture has been uh, a lot about the way that uh, the material of a building is designed uh, and the unique effect that this material has on, on the visitor. Now is the time to introduce some um, architectural concept. For example, uh, phenomenology. It is an idea that uh, started from, from uh, Germany, um, from architects developed by architects like Heidegger later translated into English and adapted into postmodern architecture as one of the uh, keys of uh, design and architecture. Phenomenology has to do with the way that we perceive a building. It has to do with the way that the impact the building has on us as, as visitors to uh, this building. Projects that have used materials and used texture and use uh, temperature have uh, a really unique impact on the visitors. The visitors in the end are the ones that experience the building and the visitors and the people who inhabit it is the ones that the building is uh, designed for. That is why phenomenology is uh, so important for uh, architecture. Another idea that I would like to introduce is the idea of aesthetics and the sublime in architecture. Architecture as an, an art has necessarily have to do with this abstract world of ideas, of this uh, impact that it has on people and on the perception of people. There are different uh, theories and interpretations and also definition of what architecture is. For example, if we can use the uh, Austrian architect uh, Adolf Loos, he distinguished architecture in two parts. One is about building and the other one is about architecture. Building is, uh, uh, well, let me start with architecture. Architecture, according to him, is anything that is monumental. It goes from a monument to and an public building, a representational building, to a cemetery, something that has to do with the memory of people. Everything else, according to him, is just building. The debate of architecture as art has been uh, always existed. The architects we will see, which we will see today borrow some ideas and techniques from art for their architecture. 
for example, uh, the Swiss architects Herzog and de Meuron have been very much connected to the art movement and the art exhibit and galleries in uh, their city, in Basel, in uh, Switzerland. They extrapolated ideas and techniques from art for their own uh, design. We have different uh, kinds of uh, art in every culture, so this uh, art defines also the different uh, techniques and, and characteristics of architecture. If we look at the work of Sana, the Japanese architects, their uh, work is very minimalist, it's ephemeral, it's almost as uh, Japanese art, it's essential, it's reduced to almost nothing. The work of uh, Jean Nouvel, who is uh, based in Paris, has a lot to do on the other side with, with uh, French culture and I would say even with uh, uh, um, Baroque and Rococo, or these like uh, uh, evolutions of Renaissance architecture which today are translated in, in this very colorful, ornamented and uh, impactful uh, architecture. The impact of architecture is essential to the people who see the building and to the people who uh, in person and also to the people who see it published in medias, in newspapers, in magazines, on websites or in video. So this idea of architecture as a media uh, and, and as something that is impacted by media is very much a topic from uh, the contemporary uh, design. Ornament is something that has existed forever in architecture. There are moments when it was more accepted and moments when it was less accepted. For example, in, in uh, Gothic times, the architecture was reduced to the minimum, uh, structure was the most important expressive element, but still in parts of a building there were always elements that would um, be a reproduction of nature that would suggest that there is certain uh, reference to nature and that would aim to embellish uh, the building. Later in Renaissance times, architecture was much more reduced to an essence. It was, there was a strong set of geometrical rules and these geometrical rules were used to design a space. And the space itself, by its character, was the one that had uh, impact on people and with its clarity and essence was uh, uh, influencing the perception of people. In uh, later architecture, as Baroque and Rococo, ornament came much more into the picture. Um, it was later uh, rejected by modern architecture. Uh, and so in modern times, uh, ornament was something that was considered degenerative and, and inappropriate for architecture. It came back when? In postmodern times. In postmodern architecture is the one that had some references to historical architecture and brought together ornament back into design as something that would embellish and with also something that would provoke the visitors. Today in contemporary uh, design and architecture we do have ornament again but it is designed in a different way. We have digital ornament, we have material ornament. Ornament is uh, uh, a way for architects to adorn a facade or to embellish a facade. If we have some uh, simple surface um, like a prism, uh, the building cannot impact the visitors because of its shape, but it uses this other device which is ornament to have an impact on our perception. The buildings that we will see today are um, not exactly ornamented, but they are uh, architects like Herzog and de Meuron and Jean Nouvel do use ornament in some other projects. We could uh, speak about many other uh, architects, but I have chosen only three offices for this uh, chapter just to give you an idea of these uh, architectural concepts and the impact that they have on uh, buildings and uh, design.